What's going on all of my healthcare professionals? I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Today we're continuing on with our cardiovascular assessment and electrocardiogram like a boss series and we're going to be looking at our pacemaker rhythms. So let's begin by looking at our single chamber atrial pacemaker rhythm. So the rate is really dependent on what the pacemaker is set at. The rhythm can be regular with asynchronous pacemakers and irregular with demand pacemakers. P waves are produced during atrial or dual chamber pacemakers and follows an atrial spike. The PR interval should be normal between 0.12 to 0.2 seconds and the QRS should also be normal less than 0.12 seconds. The definition for a single chamber atrial pacemaker is a single lead is placed in the right atrium and paces the heart between 70 to 80 beats per minute. These settings will keep the patient's heart rate from falling below that set rate. Pacer spikes fall before the P waves. There really isn't any interventions when it comes to single chamber atrial pacemakers as long as they are functioning appropriately. We want to continue to monitor for complications such as failure to capture, failure to pace, and failure to sense. Now we're going to take a look at single chamber ventricular pacemaker rhythms. So the rate really varies depending on what the pacemaker is set at. The rhythm can be regular with asynchronous pacemakers and irregular with demand pacemakers. P waves are produced either by the atria or during dual chamber pacemaker placements. If you do not have an inherent P wave rhythm produced from the atria, then you're not going to have a PR interval. The QRS is again going to be wide, ugly, disgusting. It's going to be greater than that 0.12 seconds. The definition is a single lead is placed in the right ventricle and paces the heart between 70 to 80 beats per minute. These settings will keep the patient's heart rate from falling below that set rate and pacer spikes fall before the QRS complex. Interventions are not necessary with the single chamber ventricular pacemaker as long as it is functioning correctly. And again, we wanna to continue to monitor for that failure to capture, failure to pace, and failure to sense. Lastly, we're gonna take a look at dual chamber pacemaker rhythms. So to begin, rates, again, are gonna vary depending on what the pacemaker is set at. Rhythms will either be regular with asynchronous pacemakers or irregular with demand pacemakers. P waves are either produced in the atriums or with our dual chamber pacemaker like we are finally discussing now. The PR interval should be normal because we have a dual chamber pacemaker and the QRS again is going to be wide, ugly, and disgusting. It's going to be greater than that 0.12 seconds. The definition is leads are placed in the right atrium and the right ventricle and paces the heart at a fixed rate. These settings will keep the patient's heart from falling below that set rate and pacer spikes will now fall before the P wave and before the QRS complex. And again, interventions are not really necessary with our dual chamber pacemakers unless it is not functioning appropriately. We are now gonna move on to discuss what failure to capture, failure to pace, and failure to sense looks like. So we're gonna begin by looking at failure to sense, specifically under sensing. So the definition of this is sense is the ability for the pacemaker to interpret and respond to the cardiac's own intrinsic rhythm. Under sensing is the failure of the pacemaker to recognize that intrinsic rhythm resulting in a pacer spike falling close to another beat. So our rate, our rhythm, our P waves, PR intervals, and our QRSs pretty much follow the same function as most of our pacemaker rhythms, except that we've got a beat that is occurring very close to another beat. So what are some common causes with under sensing? So it may be that the pacemaker is in asynchronous mode. The lead could have potentially become dislodged decreased P waves or QRS voltages, damaged pacemaker wires, a battery failure, or even an acute myocardial infarction can cause under sensing. 
So just to bring all of that information back home, understanding is the pacemaker's ability to interpret the intrinsic rhythm and continue to pace at that fixed rate. When it fails, the pacer spike will fall too close to the previous beat. So what do we do in regards to interventions? Well, always should be number one is we want to assess our patient and make sure that our patient is okay. We can obtain a chest x-ray to verify the lead placements. We need to consult with the provider for sensitivity setting adjustments, pacer rates, and even replacements of leads if those are what's causing the problem. We want to confirm that the pacemaker is not set to an asynchronous mode if it's not supposed to be, and we want to treat PVCs to prevent that R on T phenomenon, which could lead to many lethal rhythms. So next we're going to take a look at our failure to pace, which should also be referred to failure to sense and over sensing. So again, the rate, the rhythm, the P waves, PR interval, and QRS are always the same. The definition is oversensing is when the pacemaker identifies an extra electrical activity as a normal intrinsic beat and fails to fire leading to under pacing. So what are some causes of that failure to pace? Well, it could be sensitivity is set too high on the pacemaker. There could be some kind of interference such as electromagnetic interference. Uh, the programmed rate is inappropriate for the patient. That sometimes can be an issue, as well as shivering and seizures can affect the pacemaker's ability to pace appropriately. So again, looking at that definition of oversensing, is the pacemaker oversenses a T wave or some other electrical signal and resets the pacemaker's timing incorrectly. So for interventions, the number one thing we always want to do is assess our patients and make sure that our patient is okay. We can obtain a chest x-ray to verify the lead placement is correct. We can consult a provider for sensitivity setting adjustments, pacer rate, and replacement leads. We can remove any interference that may be causing a problem with our pacemaker. And we also want to ensure that the equipment is grounded appropriately meaning that our positive and negatives are connected to the machine appropriately. Lastly, we're gonna take a look at failure to capture. Now again, the rate is dependent on what the pacemaker is set at. The rhythm will be irregular and the P waves may be absent after a pacer spike. If the P waves are absent after a pacer spike, then we're not going to have a PR interval and the QRS may be absent as well after a pacer spike. So what is this? So capture is defined as the ability of the pacemaker to depolarize the chamber being paced. Pacer spikes are followed by a P wave or QRS complex dependent on the different kinds of pacemakers. Failure to capture is when the pacemaker provides the chamber with a stimulus, but depolarization does not occur. So what are some causes leading to failure to capture? It could be that a lead is displaced or the lead wire is broken. It could be that scar tissue has formed around the tip of the lead. Preparation of the chamber is a big one. You're gonna see a lot of bleeding. That could be a really big problem with these patients. Acute myocardial infarction can also cause failure to capture as well as electrolyte disturbances. As with all of our interventions, when we have a failure to capture, the number one thing that we want to do is assess our patients. We want to make sure that our patient is okay and that they're hemodynamically stable before we move on to try to figure out what's going on and what the cause is. We want to consult the provider for voltage setting adjustments, lead positioning, as well as a replacement battery just in case that's the problem. We also want to monitor for cardiac tamponade. If we have a per perforation inside the cardiac muscle, we're worried about bleeding. And as that bleeding progresses, it's going to start compressing the heart, making it very hard for the heart to have its own beats. We also want to treat and correct the underlying causes as well. I hope that this video was helpful in elevating your cardiac knowledge and helping you pass those exams like a boss. 
Make sure that you check out my website at www.nursechung.com where you can get copies of these resources, the PowerPoints, as well as test questions that I will be including with each one of these videos within the series. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I love answering your questions and make sure you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I can't wait to see you all again soon. Bye.